A very good morning to you. I greet you this morning in the lovely and precious name of Jesus. I trust that your week was wonderful. It's a joy once again to share the word of God with you. And I trust uh, that the Lord will minister to you. Thank you for taking time to listen to this broadcast. As you log on to this broadcast, we just encourage you to like it uh, on whatever medium you're using. Like it, share it, and comment. Uh, comment so that we get feedback from you. So please do go ahead, like, share, and comment. Amen. It's, 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 it's wonderful when you do that. We encourage you to do that. The title of our sharing, preaching this morning is Above all that you keep, keep your heart. Above all that you keep, keep your heart. Uh, the, it's taken from Proverbs chapter 4, where we will read, uh, that's our text for today, Proverbs chapter 4, and we are reading verse, uh, from verse 20. Uh, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health and medicine to all their flesh. Uh, then verse 22 says, Keep your heart with all diligence and health, um, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse, perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let your, all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right hand or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. We go back to verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence. This is New King James Version. Uh, it says, for out of it springs the issues of life. Um, another version of the Bible, uh, which, where, which is one where I took the title, it says, above all that to keep, keep your heart. In other words, it says, uh, what the writer is encouraging, that um, we, we can keep many things. There's many things that we keep. There's many things that we safeguard. Uh, here in Zimbabwe, there's a lot of uh, safeguarding of our homes with long uh, uh, walls, um, electric fences. Uh, people safeguard the, their homes and the contents of their homes by such high walls and uh, gates and um, all things, alarm systems. Uh, <coughs> we safeguard our cars. We put, we put uh, alarms. We put anti-hijack. We put all sorts of things. Um, when it comes to our gadgets, we put passwords. Some have uh, uh, two, uh, two, two process. It's two, two times to, 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 to get through a password. Uh, uh, our banks have one-time passwords uh, to safeguard our bank deposits. Um, and uh, in our gadgets, there is antivirus to make sure you safeguard against virus systems. Uh, we safeguard against ha hackings and all of sorts, all sorts of things. These are the things that we safeguard. But the writer says, above all that you keep, when you have kept your home and have put a wall around your home, when you have kept your gadgets with passwords, when you have kept your laptops, desktops with uh, antivirus, when you have uh, kept your cars with uh, anti-hijack and alarm systems, keep your heart. What he's emphasizing, it, it, it's more important to keep your heart than all these other things. Why? Because out of it are the forces of life, that which directs your life, the issues of life. So that's why you must keep your heart and guard it. Don't allow your heart to, 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 uh, to, to be filled up with poison, poison being things like bitterness, anger, uh, hatred. Keep your heart. Uh, keep your heart. Don't allow your heart to, to be defiled. Um, so, that's what we need to do. Those are the things that I want us to, uh, to remind each other of this morning. But I want to uh, look at a couple of things that we need to do as we keep our heart. Above all that you keep, keep your heart because out of it are the forces of life, the issues of life, that which directs your life. Uh, uh, many years ago, I came across uh, a, an acronym. An acronym is a word whose letters uh, make other words. Um, so the, the acronym is, I, when I came across it, it was HALT, H-A-L-T. I changed it and put another, another word there, another letter. It became BOLT, BOLT as in, uh, spelt as in B-H-A-L-T, B-H-A-L-T. So 
uh, these are the times that I feel we need to guard, to be alert in terms of guarding our hearts. Uh, because that's when we can be, uh, our hearts can be led astray and we do all sorts of things. Number one, uh, the, in our acronym, BOLD, B. The B means when you are bored, you better be careful what you do when you are bored. I think David must have been bored because he was meant to be in battle. But he sent the armies and he was on, on his own and started to decide to take a, a walk on the roof of his house. As he was in his boredom walking, looking around, when he was meant to be at war, he, he saw one uh, lady uh, uh, bathing, um, obviously when you bath you are unclothed. Uh, and from there he was tempted. Uh, we all know the story. Uh, the husband took the wife, got the husband killed, and uh, out of it um, uh, came uh, chaps like Solomon. Uh, so he, when you are bored, be careful of what you do. Guard your heart when you are bored. Don't, uh, don't just uh, walk around in, with, no, with no direction. Don't just go onto the uh, desktop and laptop and onto the internet with, with no direction because you are bound to end up opening wrong websites. You are bound to be, because you, that's not, that, that, it wasn't your intention to be on, on, on the internet. You are bored. You're just clicking and then suddenly another website comes up. For us men, images, another image just comes up and you just click and the next thing you are gone. So when you are bored, be careful what you do. So that's one of the things. The next one is H, uh, when you are hungry. Uh, so be careful. Those are times where we can probably not guard our hearts. When you are hungry. That, you remember the story of Jacob and Esau. He sold his birthright because of hunger. Uh, he says, ah, what is that to me? And then he was gone. So when you are hungry, you are, you are, you are vulnerable. Guard your heart uh, in that particular moment. Don't allow hunger to, to dictate the things that you ought to do. We must not make uh, lifetime decisions in, moment, in these moments that I'm talking about. Bored and you are hungry. Uh, make sure you, 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 you make decisions when you are sober. Uh, so the, the next one in our acronym is A. We said B-H-A-L-T. When you are angry. <laughs> that's another time when you can uh, not guard your heart. When you are angry, be careful. The Bible says be angry and don't sin. In other words, one of the easiest way to be angry and not sin is to keep your mouth shut. Because you can say things that you will regret and you can't retrieve. Uh, once you say it, you've said it. Um, uh, so you, you, you must be careful. Keep your mouth shut. When you're angry, uh, uh, maybe you're angry with your spouse or angry with somebody in your family or somebody at, where, at your workplace. Move away from the sin and go in somewhere and cool down. And then when you've cooled down, come back. And then uh, bring up the issue. By the way, you, what were you saying? Uh, so because when we're angry, we end up doing things that we are not supposed to do. Uh, and sometimes you can even end up hitting somebody because you were angry. You were boiling with anger. So when you're angry, you better make sure guard your heart because out of it are the issues of life. Uh, and, and then we, we said B-H-A-L-T. When you are lonely, when you are lonely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, that's another opportunity for all sorts of things. When you are lonely, you are watching uh, 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 satellite TV, the remote. You are just scrolling through channels. Uh, the, that you are bound to come up, up uh, across stuff that can lead you astray. You are lonely. You are looking for all sorts of things. So guard your heart in such moments. When you are lonely, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about a few things that we will need to do in such moments that we are talking about when you are bored, when you are hungry, when you are angry, when you are lonely. Uh, so when you are lonely, be careful. Um, <laughs> I'm reminded of one, uh, one particular cartoon um, uh, that I saw on one map where uh, it indicated this guy got a message from that said, uh, I'm here for you. And then the gentleman uh, replied, Ah, oh, wow, wonderful. Hey, it's good to know there's somebody who's here for me. Then the next uh, sentence says, I am your Uber driver. <laughs> so, indicating that this chap was lonely. 
he had forgotten that he had called an Uber driver. Now we know the Uber drivers, taxis. Uh, and so he had come, he was now by the gate and says, I'm here for you. So he thought it was uh, some moral support because he was lonely. He said, ah, thank you very much for being there for me. Then he says, I'm your Uber driver. So when you are lonely, <laughs> be careful the things that you, you do. You, 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 you can uh, ruin your life. You, you can do things that you, you will regret because you were lonely at a particular time. We know all sorts of things that can happen. So B-H-A-L-T. When you are tired, ish, that's another uh, time again where we need to be alert. Above all that you keep, keep your heart. When you are tired, again, don't make decisions. Uh, long time decisions. Uh, long term decisions. When, when you are in this state, when you are uh, bored, when you are hungry, when you are angry, when you are lonely, when you are tired. Uh, so uh, you are bound to end up making things that you will uh, doing things that you will regret. So be, these are the times that I, uh, I, I, I I think we need to be able to guard our hearts more and be alert and be diligent. Um, um, it, it's, it's, it's quite a nice acronym that I came across quite a while ago. So Proverbs four, where we read, tells us some of the things that we need to do as we uh, guard our heart. It says. In verse 20, where he said, Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. That's one of the things that we need to do. When you're bored, keep the words of God uh, uh, in the midst of your heart. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Uh, he says to them, keep, uh, Give attention to them. Uh, incline your ear to them. So make sure you've got the word of God. I, I, I've discovered the word of God becomes a defense in such moments when, it, it, when in the times that we talk, talked about when you are angry, when you are uh, bored, if the word of God comes up and there's a temptation that comes through the word of God is able to make you resist the temptation the psalmist says your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you uh, many times we yield to temptation because we've we've gone through moments. Maybe this I, I, I'm not sure about you, but this happens many times. Maybe because of work schedule, you become so busy. Your prayer time becomes short. Your time for the word becomes short. That's a vulnerable time where, again, when temptation comes, because you have not taken time to read God's word, to keep it before your eyes and to meditate on it, you, you your defenses are down. You you discover afterwards, ah. Oh, what have I done? Be careful. Be careful. Watch out for yourself in such times. So you must guard your heart. Uh, take time to meditate on God. Speak it to yourself. Recite it to yourself. When you are bored, they begin to speak the word of God over uh, yourself. The, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack anything good. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. God's word will refresh you. God's word will build you up. God's word will encourage you. So keep God's word. Meditate on it. Uh, think over it, over and over. Matter it. Speak it to yourself. Uh, it's one major thing. I know when it comes to me God's meditating on God's word, I keep uh, many of my messages. Uh, I come back to this uh, part. It sounds like a broken record, uh, a vinyl record. You know the the. the but but it, it, that's the essence of our Christian lives. Uh, you can't run away from this. It's the basics of our Christian life. So you must meditate on God's word. You must speak it. You, you, you must keep it in your heart. It will help you to guard your heart. That's how you guard your heart. Then, like I said, the psalmist says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when temptation comes, you are able to overcome. Uh, not only that, prayer. Um, when you are uh, prayed up, I, I like to use the word prayed up. In other words, you have had your time that you normally should have for prayer. When temptation comes, you are strong. You, you can be able to resist. But when, for whatever reason, you have not been consistent. And when temptation comes, it's easy to yield to, yield to temptation because your defensive are not, defensives are not yet up, are not up. And you can easily yield to temptation. Uh, so let's take time to pray, take time to read God's word. These are defenses, the ways that can help us to keep our heart. Above all that you keep, as much as you put passwords on your phone or antivirus on your devices, 
make sure you keep your heart how by reading and meditating on god's word by praying and taking time to pray that way you remain charged up uh strong on the inside such that when uh, uh situations or, or that can bring you down come your way you are able to stand up and resist and be able to overcome the situation i like what the scripture says in corinthians that god he allows temptation into our lives first corinthians 10 13 it says uh, there's no temptation overtaken you but such as is common to men but with every temptation god will make a way of escape that you may be able to endure it so we are able to overcome in every temptation uh when we are uh in a, in a state where we are prayed up and we are full of the word the word is able to build us up and may be able to make us overcome so those are some of the uh defenses there's many other things we can just take time when you're bored you can take time to praise and worship the lord to sing to the lord and you saw uh, uh, and that way you can connect with god but i want to talk about uh, one other major thing that uh, i failed to talk about this morning in terms of guarding your heart in terms of guarding your heart i, I felt to for us to just emphasize the fact that when it comes guard your heart against unforgiveness unforgiveness you know what people will always fail us uh we are living when we are in, uh, in church the, we are bound to not only in church anywhere else even outside church we are bound to get people that will disappoint us and fail us or offend us uh, make sure you don't hold on to uh, unforgiveness let go of unforgiveness and bitterness i like the statements that has been said over the years to say uh Holding on to unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Uh, I'll repeat that. I'm sure you've heard it before. Holding on to unforgiveness and bitterness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. In other words, the person to whom your unforgiveness is directed to is not the one that suffers because of the unforgiveness. It is you. Unforgiveness contaminates the holder of the unforgiveness, not the object of to whom the unforgiveness is directed. Hey, that's a nice, nice phrase. I like it. Uh, unforgiveness contaminates the holder of the unforgiveness rather than the object to whom the unforgiveness is contaminated. Yes, I like that phrase. You, you, uh, you, you, you can put it uh, and, 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 and put it KC2021. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but the point is this. Don't hold on to unforgiveness. It destroys you, the one who's holding on to it. Uh, uh, I like this definition that I came across. Forgiveness is giving up the right to get even. In other words, when somebody wrongs you, forgiveness if, means that you give up the right to get even, to, to get square, to say, okay, you did this to me. I'm going to do this to you. That's unforgiveness because you are getting square. You are getting even. You are retaining evil for evil. Uh, but unforgiveness, you give up the right to, to, to get even, to say, okay, God is the judge. He says, vengeance belongs to me. And I like it when God is in control. You know, some, some, but sometimes his, his, his vengeance is not what we expect because his vengeance can actually cause the person to repent like what Jonah did. You know, uh, uh, in, in, in Jonah's situation where Jonah expected, maybe he expected uh, uh, God to bring out his judgment upon Nineveh, like he said. Then he got angry to say, you see, that's why I, I want to watch him. But you see, God can, uh, in, 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 in his vengeance, cause the other person to realize their wrongs and they repent and move uh, and get born again. Because that's, uh, he, God drove them to do that. But the major thing for us is not to uh, take it onto our hands to be the one that meet out the justice, meet out the, 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 the punishment that we think is necessary for that offense but it says you give up that right and let god be the one who judges he says vengeance belongs to me hey the bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god so that's why it's it's prudent wise to let god deal with it he knows how to best to deal how best to deal with the situation or the individual who has offended you so don't take it upon you to be the one uh that uh revenge revenges I remember when I was growing up, we used to watch a lot of uh, kung fu or karate films. And one of them films, one of them is, uh, uh, had a title that I still remember up to this day. It says, revenge is sweet. No, not for human beings. 
uh, but it was you saw you know those those uh, movies uh, you, uh, always at a plot where somebody's wronged and then somebody goes and trains up and, and, and begins to learn kung fu or karate and then when they go back to go in and then meet out the justice ish we will be applauding to say yeah, yeah. No, but that's not the way to deal with it uh, we need to be the one and let go let god be give up the right to get even let god deal with the individual let them fry uh, and when god deals with them they do fry uh, uh, in, in other, he, he, he makes sure he deals out the right me, me, me judgment the right measurement that's why god says if your enemy is, uh, is hungry feed them because human beings are used to tit for tat you know you do this to you do, do this to me i'll do that to you Ah, mina ngenzo so mina. You do, you don't do this to me. That's what we are used trained. When you then don't do that, hey, it bothers people. Who say, ah, but you know I did so this to them, and they are not. When you respond in kindness, you you you, you disorient them. You 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 confuse you confuse individuals that are used to the system of tit for tat, an eye for an eye. Uh, no no, that's not. Jesus didn't call us to do that. He called us to walk in an, in forgiveness. Give up the right to get even. Let God be the judge. Let him be the one who meets out the vengeance. He says, vengeance belongs to me. And he does the right task, the right job. So, let go of unforgiveness. Some, peop- some of us could be holding on to unforgiveness to people that have died. Uh, is dead and gone, you are still holding on to uh, the unforgiveness. So somebody that wronged you, yes, yes, you are a prisoner to the person to whom you are holding the unforgiveness. They are, they, they are controlling your life. And when you don't forgive, you allow the, you give the individual power over your life. Because the moment you think of them, something rises up on the inside of you. And you, you, you it's anger and you, 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 you bitterness you 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 want to curse them no 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 no. that's not the way we do it let go let god deal with it and in our dealing with it we need to start in faith sometimes the feelings might not be there but begin to pray lord so and so wronged me i i i forgive them i let go i let go of this anger let go i take authority over every demonic spirit behind the manifestation of this anger and i thank you or this bitterness or this unforgiveness and i thank you that you begin to move and I, I give it up to you. I leave it up to you to take charge and to take control of this situation. So, above all that you keep, keep your heart. The Bible says do not let any root of bitterness spring out in your heart and defile you. It will defile you. Let God be the one that judges. Let, 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 let go. Forgive. Uh, I, I, I want to read in Ephesians chapter 4 uh, in uh, the verse reading from verse 29 it says let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the to the hearers and do not grieve the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption then this is the verse that i want let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice verse 32 and be kind to one another tender-hearted wow beautiful stuff forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake has forgiven you hallelujah let me read verse 31 to 32 let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice now the reason he directs us to put it away because it is in our power to put it away you can hang on to it and hold on to it but it is you in your power to let go to put it away you don't have to pray to God to put it away. You let it go and then he will allow the feelings of unforgiveness to come through. And then he says, be kind to one another. Tender-hearted. Forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Uh, one of the major things we need to remind ourselves is that the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. And uh, because he's on the inside of us, the fruit of the Spirit can manifest in our lives. And uh, we can allow that fruit to manifest as we forgive and walk in uh, in kindness, being tender-hearted. It's a process. It's a journey. It's not a sprint. It's not a hundred-meter dash, but it's a process. Uh, I know some people who can boast about probably the wrong uh, attributes that they have to say, "Ah, me, 
Me, I'm, I've got a short fuse. No, no, no. That's not something to boast about, that you, you, you get angry quickly. Uh, you must allow the Holy Spirit to deal with that and you are able to walk in forgiveness. Uh, give up the right to get even and let God take charge. So we must take time to pray, take time to meditate on God. For me as an individual, those are the key things that have helped me. Like I said, as well, to in those moments when you, like we mentioned at the beginning, when you are bored, when you are hungry, when you are angry, when you are lonely, when you are tired, those particular moments are critical. Be alert. Keep your guard up. Keep guard your heart. For out of it are the issues of life. So, uh, because uh, a lot of what we see gets into our hearts and influences our, 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 our behavior. That's why it says, for out of it flow the issues of life. Uh, so that's why you, 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 you must guard your hearts in those moments. The, uh, I, li I like one, what one writer says, that um, your life will take the direction of your most dominant thoughts, which is why we must guard our hearts and allow us, uh, God's word to be the one that we meditate on. If you are meditating on the wrong thing, uh, your life will take the direction of the most dominant thoughts in your life. If your tho uh, thoughts are lustful thoughts, guess what will happen? That's the direction your life will take. Uh, so, or whatever, your life will take the direction of your most dominant thoughts. So we need to then allow the word of God to, to dominate our thinking. That's why we meditate on God's word. That's why we read God's word and, 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 speak it in, uh, and, 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 and speak it and matter it and confess it. So that it dominates our thinking and then our life will take the direction of our most dominant thoughts, which is what? The word of God. Amen. So it's important. Above all that you keep, when you have kept uh, your car and put all sorts of gadgets to, uh, to, to make it safe, when you have uh, put all sorts of things around your home, uh, razor wire, electric fence, <laughs> um, we had a, a, a burglar coming in uh, when... Uh, uh, unfortunately, power went away and uh, there was no generator. They went over the electric fence and stole. So, uh, but about when you've uh, put up the, the jura wall and you've put up the walls and whatever, when you have put up uh, passwords on your, on your phone and w whatever other gadgets, guard your heart. That's the most, thing, most important thing to guard because out of it flow the issues of life. Amen and amen. I trust that that word is ministered to you. If you are watching this and you are not born again, you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I encourage you to open your heart and pray this prayer to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And conf I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again from the dead. When you that pray that prayer, the Bible says you become a child of God. You become born again. You become saved. Born again, saved, speak of the same thing. Uh, so uh, do pray that prayer and uh, there will be a change that happens in your life an eternal change that happens. Jesus comes into your heart and he will change you. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful week. Wherever you are, con continue to maintain the COVID protocols if the lockdowns and restrictions have not yet been lifted. Let's be safe. Let's mask up in countries where we are masking up and sanitize and social distance. Let's remember, remember that COVID is real and uh, let's take precautions. May the Lord bless you and uh, keep you and watch over you and uh, be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen and amen.